Okay, so look, to start this question, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the ellipse, all right? Anytime you get a question like this where you have both an ellipse and a parabola, among other things inside in the question, you always start with the ellipse, okay? Trying to position the ellipse after you have other items drawn tends to be a bit more difficult, okay? And you can all often just shoot yourself in the foot and cost yourself time. So we'll start with the ellipse here, okay? Now, the length of the ellipse, the horizontal ellipse, uh, the length of it is 130, okay? So our minor axis is going to be half of that. Um, so it's going to be 65 and our minor axis is uh, they're telling us here has a, half the ellipse has a height of 40 which means that the total minor axis would be 80 so we're going to use 40 for that size as well so we're going to use 65 and 40 for our major and minor So 40 millimeters for our minor. And 65 for our major. Okay, as usual, we're going to divide that into uh, Usually we divide it into 12, but this time we're only going to divide it into 6 because we're only drawing half an ellipse. So I need only draw or divide up the top half. So where these points hit our major axis, so these um, four points here where the 30 and 60 degree lines hit our major, we're going to draw lines um, vertical, okay, and they're going to come down. So lines hit, uh, sorry, where those 30 degrees and 60 degree lines hit our minor axis, okay, we're going to use those points here, okay, and we're going to bring them across, okay, so we'll use the T-square to draw those across. Okay, and that has located each of our points for our semi-ellipse. those points there. I'm going to just lightly draw in the curve now. Okay. Um, I will wait until the end before I heavy in the whole thing. Okay, when I can untape my sheet I can then heavy in the curve afterwards. Now the next bit is the parabola. Okay, the parabola is going to go down below this ellipse. Okay, so two points of our parabola are the points at the two ends of the ellipse here. Um, the labels they have on the question are A and C. Okay, so for example, if we drew a parabola like so, um, it, it's these two points here that we're talking about. This parabola is inverted, which means it's upside down. So it's like so. So we basically have that point there and that point there. Okay, so that's A and C. So what we're going to do is we're going to start our rectangle at these two points come down okay and it has a total length of 110 okay so i'm just going to draw two lines down here first that determines the width of my parabola okay and the length of the parabola is like we said is 110 so i'm just going to mark 110 and draw that there okay and i'm going to continue this center line from the ellipse down through here that divides this rectangle in half for us okay and this point here is the vertex of our parabola okay in the question it's called D okay but I'm going to put in brackets I'm just going to put V right V for vertex 
<coughs> okay, so the sizes they've given us are uh, 65 for this half and 65 for this half. Okay, so obviously we'll do one half first. Uh, I'll tackle the left hand side first. Okay, so uh, 65 doesn't divide into anything kind of easily um, for us, nor does 110. So um, we're going to have to divide up our two side lengths. Um, now, to do this, okay, the line that I want to divide up is going to be A over as far as this midpoint here. So it's from here to here. And what I'm going to do is draw a line off from um, either side of the line. It doesn't matter really, but I'm going to go from the middle line here. Draw a line off at any angle. Okay. And I'm going to divide this into, I'm going to say five. Okay. Um, just based on the size, I think five would be a good amount. I'm gonna so a line off any angle, okay, and any length you want. Get your compass, put about the thickness of your finger, okay. So if you get your index finger there, you want about that size, and then just put five marks along that line. So three, four, and five. Okay, so those are my five marks there. Here, here here, here, and here. Okay, I'm going to join the last one to the other end of the line, which is A. Join that to there, okay. And that gives me the angle that I need to do my sliding set squares at, okay. So I'm going to use my T-square um, with my set square, okay. You can easily just use your set square as well and just put that underneath it. It works perfectly well as, as well. Uh, so I'm setting that up there. So set up the edge of my um, set square here, par or in line with that line, okay, and I'm just going to slide it across to my next mark, slide it down to there, and the next one over here, and just moving it along. Okay, so all those lines are parallel to each other, okay, and that is critical. So our five, that is our line divided into five there now. We need to do the same tr uh, with the line that goes from here down to this bottom left hand corner here. Okay, so again, I'm going to go from A this time, okay, draw a line off at any angle I like, okay. Again, I can just use the same size I had in my compass a minute ago. Create our five marks, three, four, five. Okay, it's critical that if you have five here, you need to have five here along this side as well. You can't have five here and six here for example okay they need to have the same amount of spacings and we're going to join again I'll do these in green so we'll join the last one to the end of the line right which is here so join that to there okay and again that gives us our angle for our sliding set square so again I'm just going to use my set square and my T square so set that line up there in line and draw these along here and that has divided this side into five as well okay as usual the ones along the side here okay they need to be joined to V so I'm going to join each one of these five spacings up to V Okay, the only one I don't need to take is the one where the parabola is going to start, so point A. So I do not need to join that up into V. Okay, you skip that one. We're going to use again to so the red line, we'll come up to the first one, second one to the second line, third one to the third line, and fourth one to the fourth line. we have our parabola points then and obviously it down there as well okay again I'm just going to put in a rough effort at this curve okay we'll be having it in afterwards and to complete the other side okay we're just going to do axial symmetry with the points that we have here okay so 
I'm going to take, bring a line across using my T-square to the other side using each point that we found in our parabola. So bring them right across. Use your compass, okay? We've axial symmetry, okay? So we're doing symmetry across this line in the middle. So we're going to use our compass, measure out, so to one of the points, okay? Swing it around and just mark it on the opposite side, okay? We know we can do axial symmetry here because parabolas are symmetrical. Okay, if you do that with each point, you'll get your points on the opposite side of your curve. Okay, and our parabola is going to go up this way. I have an effort done at each part of that curve there now, so I'm going to untape my sheet because I've got all my details drawn. And once I do that then I can draw the curve freehand. It's much easier to rotate the sheet okay, and get a good quality curve than it is to have to rotate your arm or your body in order to actually get a, a curve drawn. So that's why I untaped the sheet. You can see as I move around my arm flows comfortably in this position so I'm going to turn the sheet as opposed to turning my arm or my wrist or whatever in, a, in an awkward uncomfortable way. is the question done okay now you can see I've left gaps just where the points are that's just so you can see them clearly but you will draw straight through all the points okay that is that question done okay so that is the guitar pick um, it's on page 141 of discovery graphics discover graphics sorry